So welcome, welcome everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everybody who's there today in the webinar. Uh, thank you for coming. And um, so today is a very interesting speaker and a very interesting topic as well. Uh, if somebody has to play a KVC, and the question is, which is the fastest growing Indian multinational pharma, trust me, with a lot of conviction, I can say that you know, unanimously there will be only one answer, and that's Mankind Pharma. So today we have the man behind Mankind Pharma, Mr. Rajiv Judeja. Uh, Rajiv Judeja is the MD and the Vice Chairman of Mankind Pharma, a very highly ambitious business entrepreneur, and he is a driving force behind what Mankind Pharma is today. He has great insights into marketing, and that gives a very competitive edge to Mankind Pharma in what it is today. Uh, focus of Mr. Rajiv Chuneja, as I know and understand, is completely team spirit. He nurtures the human assets of the organization. And for him, the core strength of an organization and that what Mankind Pharma is today is about people. So tonight, let's hear from nobody else but other than Rajiv Chuneja on what the focus on people development should be as the organization scale up. So with this, completely to you, Rajiv. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, wonderful kind of I mean, uh, introduction. Uh, happy, excited, very humbling. I have mixed feelings uh, after listening to you. And uh, thank you very much for thinking me able to really come here and speak something about uh, leadership. Uh, so starting with this and uh, without going much in... Uh, formal kind of HR philosophies and policies. Uh, we've always been very out of the box, uh, uh, very different uh, from rest of the organizations. That is what we believe in. I don't know how true it is or false it is. Uh, the first thing uh, which most of the organizations run behind is, or as a whole, the atmosphere is, most important is results outcome. Uh, on the contrary, in mankind, we feel that result is not important. Because whenever you think of result, a lot of other things are missed out. And especially what basically is missed out is human being, the people uh, who plays a key role uh, in bringing those results. Uh, so in mankind, we say, forget the result. Don't worry about the result. You have a backing of uh, us. Uh, just focus on three things, three Ps. I mean, these are very popular things, people, processes, and products. So everybody knows it. Uh, the problem basically is what? Knowing is not everything. Uh, you need to have some sort of a courage to really implement these things. Whenever you look at any organization, Organizations are basically extension of uh, thought process of promoters. What kind of uh, thought process the promoters basically have got. Sometimes uh, they are more towards marketing side, more towards IT side, more towards operation side. So as a whole, the atmosphere varies from that only. What kind of a people they believe in, what kind of uh, choices they make while selecting leaders, those who would be running on their behalf, the organization. Uh, the leaders of what kind? Uh, simple, straight, hardworking, uh, glamorous, flamboyant. What kind of leadership? It's all about your own choices. So you make your own choices, we made our own choices. And these leaders basically select uh, and appoint their kind of people. So it's always, it cascades down from top to bottom. So in mankind, we always focus on P's, three P's, people, processes, and products, and make sure that there's no pressure of a result at any given time on the people. On, on the leaders actually. An atmosphere of the organization is intact. 
let me give some examples of that. So I will start with people because I feel uh, we are totally uh, people-driven kind of organization, extremely people-driven organization. I'm talking about the philosophy of I mean, different philosophies can work for different organizations, but where, what has really worked for mankind. And one example I've given you is from last 27 years, there is no target in mankind, no revenue target. So that's example, walking, the talk is more important. So it's simply saying uh, there's no pressure, will not be sufficient. You need to really I mean, have that kind of a commitment. So where we focus, we focus on people and processes and products. And when we think of people, we, we feel out of these three P's, the most important P is the people. Why so? Because people make processes, they implement the processes. They are the people, they are the guys responsible for bringing products. So let me talk first of all about uh, the people and what we look at any person. When we select somebody, when we meet somebody, whether he's experienced, he's a manager in some other company, he's a leader in some company, or he's absolutely untrained. Few things. In Hindi, they speak, the first is Niyat. What are the intentions? What are the, I mean, what kind of a integrity this man has got? Uh, this is extremely important. Uh, in our uh, grandfather, father used to speak about, if your Niyat is fine, everything is fine. Uh, so Niyat plays a very, very important role. The second basically is what? Mehnat. How hardworking are you? That's extremely important. And no Mehnat is sufficient without having a Shiddat, you call it passion. The passion is extremely important. And when after passion, what basically is required, how neither are you? How fearless are you? And last but not the least is Jiddi. I mean, you're not afraid of uh, doing new things, failing. So let me talk one by one everything. Uh, when we talk about the passion, when we talk about uh, the people, the most important thing is we say to everybody, uh, we give some tools to people to check out how much they have got what. Important thing in a person basically is what? The willingness to work. And whenever anybody uh, leaves his home at any given time, nine o'clock, eight o'clock, whatever time, he's supposed to ask a question to himself. We say, we'll not assess you, you assess yourself. Are you excited to work today or not? Reasons can be 10,000. Uh, so every day, give your number out of 10. Uh, it's not, Aaj mera mood hai, main kaam karunga. it's not that mood. You give your number. And you cannot give more than eight numbers because nine is God, 10 is then does not happen. We are, we are basically uh, people from old school. Uh, I don't believe in the philosophy of 99% and 100% kind of numbers because they reflect that the person does not need any kind of improvements. So we say, don't give more than eight numbers. And if 365 days, you give numbers. And if six is a number, your percentage is 60%, then you're a good worker. You have willingness. If it is 70% plus, you're excellent more than 70 percent you're great nobody can stop you from becoming successful that is the way you talk to people this is one the second basically is what what kind of a passion is there because because uh without passion it does not nothing can happen and passion can be judged passion can be checked whatever assignments are there in your hand don't think about the result. Result is a bigger thing. Just small, small assignments people are being given. When that assignment comes to you, when you are in the middle of executing it, are you doing it for the sake of formalities? You say, you ask yourself, are you doing it because there's a pressure on you, uh, the salary is coming or responsibilities are there, or you are loving it? Again, we say, without the fear of outcome. Forget the outcome. Are you trying your level best or not? Next thing we say to everybody, how many new things have you tried? Last couple of quarters, month, year, what are new things are you doing? Uh, what's the meaning of new things? The things 
in which you have either failed in the past that's a challenge or new thing is you are doing something for the first time where chances of failure are maximum because without trying new things you cannot upgrade yourself when you're talking about upgradation we're talking about human resource because anything which is stagnant will die one day will all will become dinosaur will all go to museum so we say keep uh, poking uh, teasing people what are you uh, this is a kind of a atmosphere we create and we always say one thing all these three things cannot happen until and unless there is no fear of failure in you and we and we say to everybody please celebrate failure please do it and we will encourage you somebody can say that i am failing and failing then we say there is a formula of it 80% keep doing what you're doing 20% new assignments 20% uh check out those things where you failed in the past take challenges so whatever uh success you'll get out of those 20% will add in your personality in your substance because at end of the day it is not your designation which matters it is always what you have got in yourself in the form of qualities and substance this is what basically is atmosphere as far as mankind is concerned we always talk to everybody like this only and combined together if you combine all these things you can say it is not people talk about uh, mankind mankind is are very very hard working we say no they are not hard working they are h e a r t hard working uh the meaning of hard working is that there is some kind of a honesty feeling in them uh and this cannot happen this honesty feeling cannot really happen uh without bringing that sort of atmosphere in the organization uh important thing basically is what uh, you teach people properly you train people properly so we give lot of importance on trainings uh once you join mankind once once anybody joins mankind is a mankindian company will stand behind him company would be most loyal we feel personally bad when somebody leaves it it takes away our uh sleeps so we love the guy but entering mankind is the toughest one uh in one interview of 5 minutes and 10 minutes you're not true at least on a lower level right you're supposed to pass a very very tough training program of 30 days and dropout rate is more than 30% so 70% people only can pass those training so once you're trained once you're a mankindian then you are you are you are you're marrying mankind that's the kind of a thing we basically believe in the second basically is what we all talk about uh education system and we say that uh application based education is much better and i give you example many years back i heard from somebody that uh, the whole school uh one class of the school was taken to a village of small kids and they were made to stay in a village next day they were asked to write an essay on village that is true application based education because somebody the kids lived over there in a village must have experienced that somebody did not teach them what village is so we say once this training theoretical training is over uh the next most important thing is that our leaders anybody a senior must really take them in the field in operations anywhere and everywhere and demonstrate uh ideally at least for 3 to 5 days initially whenever a person joins whatever hr tells him he has many questions out of uh, shyness lack of confidence maybe he didn't ask so once somebody is hand holding him he will ask lots of questions and most important thing is what we tell every leader uh if you want to really teach anybody anything most important thing is uh don't focus on result when you don't focus on result you focus on people when you focus on people 
It's not the professional side. It's not a skill side. You search his heart. You, you understand him as a whole. As a whole means the family background, his aspirations, why he's working, what he wants, uh, what are his dreams. Make him speak. Uh, and nobody will speak to you until and unless we trust you. So you, first of all, that bonding has to come. And the bonding can come when you live with him for three days, four days, five days, opening a bank account. Generally, I'm just giving you small, small examples. Or uh, if the person does not have an accommodation, helping him finding that. It's not only uh, I'm your manager only as a professional. It's not like that. It's creating relationship. Uh, in mankind, we honestly believe that uh, IQ is less important than EQ. Because road to mind, road to head goes from heart. If you love somebody, if you like somebody, and you say he's a good guy, uh, lots of things are being solved. Remember the time we were students. Which teacher we used to love most? Who used to listen to us? Who used to give us nice gestures? Who used to welcome us? So this is a kind of a I mean, uh, kind of atmosphere we create for our people. Uh, everything is application based uh, because until and unless you teach, you demonstrate, and then you leave them. Uh, and when you leave them. For a few months, keep a close eye, keep guiding them. Uh, but after that, don't interrupt them when they are committing mistakes. Let them commit mistakes. Just think. Uh, when we are most receptive, when we are thinking a lot, when we are introspecting most, when we are cursing ourselves most, when we fail. At the time of success, you tell somebody you're very successful, but these are the mistakes, right? He will listen, but will he absorb? Will he follow? Will he implement? I doubt. The most difficult time is teaching somebody at the time of success. The easiest time is teaching somebody when he's failing. So we, we, that's why we say that uh, feeling is most important. Extremely important because that's the opportunity. Let them fail, but let them have small, small defeats. You come in, you guide people, you help people. This is this is kind of atmosphere we create. Uh, we've all learned when we were given some kind of a responsibility. Uh, sometimes we fail, sometimes we succeed. Two things happen. Whatever assignment we take in our life, either we will succeed or we will fail. Success generally gave confidence to us. Uh, but too much success is bad. Too much success can make people arrogant, rude. Uh, that's a problem with it. too much success. One assignment after another assignment. I'm a topper. I got a top job. Uh, the problem can start after lots of success. We have many examples. On the second side, failure will happen also. Either you succeed or you fail. When you fail, you become receptive. You, you basically become sensitive. You understand the meaning of embarrassment. You understand the meaning of insult. Uh, so at, during that time only, the most important quality of a leader develops in a person, and that is called empathy. Because when you fail, then this element of empathy comes. Uh, that I failed, I felt like that. I'm not supposed to pe make people scold, criticize when they are down, when their chips are down. And when it combines success, confidence, and failures, failure gives you what? What is experience? That is experience. When we say I'm experienced, experience does not mean Success. Experience basically means failures. So combine these two things, you become mature. That's a balance of life. Uh, and that is extremely important. The second most important thing we talk about in mankind basically is the processes. 
And in processes, organization play a very, very important role. And I was talking about the failure side. On one, one way in the process, when somebody is making a mistake, stop him, say you are making a mistake, right? The chances are 50-50. Maybe you're wrong, maybe he's right. And if you're not stopping him while failing, if he succeed in that, you learn a new way of doing something. If, he's, if, he, if he fails, all right, he'll come to you. Uh, you have plenty to teach to him. Uh, a lot of patience, patience is required. Uh, a lot of guts are required for all these things. Not thinking about result, where whole world, every place you go is talking. And once somebody goes out of mankind, from the meetings, from our talks, we keep sending videos, we keep talking about these things time and again, the same talks are there. But once it goes, it goes in the atmosphere, people talk about result, he comes back, uh, contaminated, we say, no, forget that. It's a lengthy exercise, you need a lot of patience. We are, exercise, we are exercising this process, this uh, philosophy from the last 27 years, the third basically is what? If you want to make people Successful, you're supposed to create certain things, right processes, good processes, easy to understand, help them, and products which have delta over competitors. You cannot give them me too kind of products, run of mill products, uh, ask them to perform, ask them not to think about results. There's a shalok in Gita, karam ki ja, fal ki cha mat kare insan. Because Bhagavan knows it very well that we have a tendency of going drifting towards results. So he's saying, don't focus, don't go too much. It's like uh, I've seen people going for dieting and checking their weight every day in the morning. So, what kind of a disappointments will come? How people will feel? I am I weighted? So there should always be a gap. And when these processes are happening when daily dose of some kind of appreciation, some kind of encouragement should really uh, be given to people that, all right, your process is right. This will take 21 days. This will take 30 days. This will take six months. It's same, it's same like making, going in a gym and uh, seeing yourself on a daily basis and thinking my body uh, is not like a not Shwana's girl. It does not happen overnight. It takes it's year, year, years uh, long process and rigorous working basically need to have. But it does not happen without the support uh, of the organization, without the support and without having the belief of the promoters. And that belief has to go in the leaders. Many a times uh, when new leaders join us, they come back to us, sir, Everybody believes in target the performance in that area is not happening. Should, should not we go for it? No, forget that. The problem is not the performance. The problem is the person could not find out the root cause of the problem. So people have a tendency of looking at the result, not looking at uh, that, uh, the root cause. Uh, when, we, when I talk about the atmosphere, when I talk about the daily dose of appreciation, the simple formula basically is what? At any given time, uh, we all know the formula of 70, 30, I don't know, this has been discussed in colleges that 70% should be appreciation, 30% should be criticism. But ask anybody and look at any, anybody, any leader, when the time of criticism comes, his emotions are at his highest peak. When a time comes of appreciation, you're doing good. Keep it up. You're flat. It's not your words which will matter. How you make a person feel it. That is more important. So we say, same emotions. Same, your, your appreciation should be true your criticism should be genuine and you should know when to do it, when to speak, when not to speak. Uh, extremely important for people. 
in our case, we have all mankind is famous for bottom-up approach. And people say your strategy was very good. When we started the organization, there was no strategy. Uh, we had no money. So uh, mother of invention or creativity is what? The scarcity. We did not have, we could not go to big cities, big doctors, big hospitals. So circumstances were like those that we were supposed to go in smaller cities, smaller doctors. So that gave birth to a, uh, a bottom up approach and people talk about that. But advantage basically is what? When you bo go bottom up, uh, when you start with little money, when you have seen 60, 70% failure every time, uh, the compassion is at highest, empathy is a lot, anytime. For example, you are there, you're listening. My mind, 50% of my, my mind is towards you. And 50% I'm talking about my points. Am I talking right? Am I talking correct? Am I natural? Am I taking talking something artificial? No, I will not talk. With the help of Yogesh, we make, made a transparency. Then I said, I am not comfortable with transparencies. Let me talk my heart out. Uh, we always tried our level best to connect with people uh, from heart. And that's why the attrition in mankind is minimal. People don't leave mankind. And whenever I talk about attrition, I have a very uh, important thing to talk about uh, for the leaders. No leader wants attrition to happen. And whenever attrition happens, people start calling on phone, calling people, what happened wrong, exit interviews are there. But everybody has to really understand, attrition did not happen the day he sent the resignation. Attrition happened at least six months, seven months, nine months before that. He disengaged himself from the organization. So try to find holistic root cause behind the attrition rather than going for it. So attrition should be less. If I say attrition should not be there, attrition is bad for the leaders, attrition should not be there. And you should appreciate, you should criticize less, you should appreciate more. Then it leads to confusion as well. So there needs to be a, some kind of explanation for that as well. Appreciate, criticize, don't let attrition happen, but make sure one thing, the most important thing basically is what? Uh, right people should not leave. Bad people, if somebody has is corrupt, somebody has gone to wrong practices. Uh, and we say whenever you punish anybody, follow in the Indian judicial court. Somebody has stolen, punishment accordingly. Somebody has killed, punishment accordingly. Somebody has made a small theft, punishment accordingly. There's no single rule sacking, terminating. It's a bad word. So we don't like to write, terminate. We have never written anybody. Maybe in the last 27 years, three people have been terminated. That's a long history. Uh, if organization wants, people can leave. I mean, the point is that. So we, we all always want that this kind of practices should be there. One thing I just uh, uh, always believe that once we're talking about uh, the leaders, uh, because that leadership is extremely important. Two things should never be forgotten by the leaders. Either you inspire, one, second, or you make people realize. If you criticize, you lose him. If you react, you lose him. When your temper is high, don't talk to him. Our philosophy is don't talk to the person for 24 hours because you'll end up uttering wrong words, rude words, and uh, it will not come back. Uh, one, of, one of the most important reasons why we don't talk about sale and result because that builds a lot of pressure. So everybody talks about, I need the result. I'm, I do not know about the product. 
I do not know how to handle the product. I do not know the processes. I do not know how to present a product. And somebody is talking to you about the result. That's the problem. You said, forget the result. Look at the person, look at the process, look at the products, focus on those, those things. So this will happen. And we believe, very strongly believe that uh, very ordinary people, we are very ordinary. Honestly, even, uh, we have blessings that we have come to this particular level. Uh, that ordinary people, if they are being charged, if they are being motivated, if they are being made to believe, uh, and how to make me? How 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 can you make to, uh, make them to believe, trusting them, and most importantly, helping them in their crisis. Most important time to help anybody is when he is in crisis. When he makes an innocent mistake, you stand behind him like a rock. It's very important. I give one example for that. Uh, on social media during this COVID time. Uh, there was a post was there that we have given two years salary because our few people have died. So we will educate their whole family. A lot of uh, social media viral messages were there. And during that phase, uh, we in the last two years time, we have given 250 crore rupees in different causes to doctors, to policemen, to nurses, to prime minister fund, to state floods, this, that. Because in mankind, Philosophy has always been giving, actually is taking. We all strongly believe in that. So during that time, this was viral and somebody asked her, are we doing something? And we were just contemplating what we should do, right? So any calculated person would have gone for three years to beat them, four years to beat them. So we went for 13 years. We lost 23 people. In pandemic in the last two years. So we gave their family 13 years salary. When somebody leaves our organization, we make sure he leaves uh, by getting everything. So he should always have a hangover of man that he, he lost a good, good organization because we take everything personally. You're leaving us, you, you regret. We are good people. We take care of you. We are 24-7 involved. 24-7 uh, involved from a distance. What basically is our uh, job is making sure that our core values are intact. Rest is in the hands of uh, leaders. When I was talking about leaders, when I was talking about promoters selecting leaders, so you select your kind of people. You can select bosses. You can select leaders. So we all know about bosses, bosses like limelight, bosses like praise, bosses like people are very egoistic, the poor listener, we all know about them. But what is what is the basically quality of a leader in, in mankind I think? Many, many qualities are there. You, you, are, you guys are more knowledgeable than me, but our philosophy is when you're followed in absence, not in your presence. In presence, in bosses are listened, followed. In the absence, true leadership. Leaders are not leaders without followers. If you don't have followers, you're not leader. But okay, I have followers. But are they following your practices, your philosophy, your values in your absence? That can happen when you are talking to them, when you're present with them, what kind of gestures are you giving them? I mean, okay with the time? Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that's extremely important for us. And uh, we talk to everybody that, uh, the example of Gandhiji, he's not there. Is he not there? We talk about him. All great leaders are like that. So we say if we can become 0.0000, minuscule percentage of that. Can we, can we have that kind of a uh, thought process? And this can happen when you touch people's heart. Uh, important for us, we all, 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 always believed in that. Important thing, extremely important thing. 
in leadership we always talk about during different phase of your life as a leader you'll have many crises and whenever we are in crisis uh, we are nervous uh, we are negative we are pessimist some kind of a negativity is always there so we say always think one day this big crisis will look like a small dot and we give we always tell everybody look at anybody all the successful people talk about what not their success they always talk about their failures the struggle so if you are failing that's a wonderful sign if you're in crisis that's a wonderful sign keep your uh, don't take it to your heart right keep a positive attitude keep working and don't think too much don't analyze too much not more than 30 40% 60 70% have a solution based approach one team has left 50 people have left so you're tensed my 50 people have gone so how can you just change the situation full filling those vacancies in shortest possible time without compromising with people training them you set the ball rolling finished that that's extremely important that is a solution based approach you always believe for every problem go think of solution spend maximum time on solution otherwise uh failure result tension and pressure that takes away my active mind so we say look towards the light last not the least extremely important the humbleness extremely important and i tell you uh i come from a very humble background my brother is 100 times more humble than me uh there are many advantages of advantages of humbleness uh advantage number one when you're rising and rising fast many people will appreciate many people will uh, say great wonderful but some will always think why this guy what special he has got why i should really follow him why should i why he has been promoted why is become successful right if you're arrogant you will increase resistance against you on the second side if you're humble you could you talk to him nicely and respectfully all right uh you are bringing it down uh i said last but two more things i wrote down certain things and i'm reading those <laughs> uh need to be holistic you cannot have one side work on that have a holistic approach see as a whole attrition has happened uh performance is not there one year is there growth is not there all right holistic or uh, don't run behind people don't crush people uh because that will not give you anything that will always uh, be bad second last this is truly second last a leader should be hyper genuinely hyper he should always be edgy if he's not edgy he'll not be able to give new assignments new things he'll not be proactive because after lunch if you're sleeping if you're sleeping you're not edgy every minute you should be excited are you this question should be asked are you edgy or not so when you ask these questions uh one does happen uh because nothing is bigger than self realization and always thinking always 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 that every machine will command more value whether it's a phone or tv or laptop or anything and everything when it has it is having a latest model as a human being we should always ask what is my model we always sleep in the night and ask are we 2022 model or we are still in last year and we if we say i am a latest model i have learned then the question is what new things are you practicing now and that's why we say to forget a lot experiments any tool go for it thank you very much and uh, wonderful talking to you one way talking <laughs> yeah.
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, you. Mr. Rajiv. Uh, it was very mesmerizing and I'm actually speechless hearing you. Mm -hmm. And I wish it could continue more and more. I was just completely absorbed in the talk. Thank so, you so much. People, uh, you can ask your questions. Just raise a hand and I will unmute you as well. Uh, or you can type it in the chat box as well, your questions, whatever uh, you like. Or oh, you, somebody was tweeting them already. Excellent. So a lot of comments coming in. Uh, till the time people put in their questions, I have a question, Mr. Janeja, for you. And uh, you said too much success makes a person rude and arrogant. I see a lot of success with Mankind Pharma and Soju, but I don't see a speck of arrogance there. I don't see a speck of, you know, being rude. So what's the secret behind you being so humble and so grounded? I told you, Amanda, we came from a, I mean, uh... My father was a clerk. So throughout, throughout the life, either you see failure and embarrassment and insults after becoming successful or in the starting. So when you start from bottom, right? You have seen life. Uh, you know, I'm a college dropout. I left college because... Uh, at that time, going in the business was more important for my brother. I should join him. Uh, meeting people, watching people, working in a local company, uh, which has zero brand before Mankind. So Mankind was started with 50 lakh rupees and 95, whatever we got from the previous company, right? So when you have always struggled, always seen... Uh, meaning of failure, meaning of success, meaning of appreciation is what? You want that you don't want to inflict these uh, wounds on other people. You don't want to harm other people. So that's one reason. This is one. The second basically is what? Your outcome, uh, you, whatever you are, your outcome of your past, family, atmosphere in the family, brothers, sisters, your friends, lower middle class. Generally, these people, generally, They've seen the worst of their life, so they don't become arrogant. And, and, and if you're sensitive, uh, if you're leading a long team, big team, you understand one thing, that you're just representing them, genuinely I'm talking. Lots of things are being done by those guys. I just get the credit. What is my job? My, maybe I'm just a person who is cementing them together. Uh, by, uh, and I, I feel the biggest responsibility of mine is that uh, core values of mankind should stay there. There should be a wonderful team spirit, wonderful team spirit. And the meaning of team spirit is only one, sacrifices. It does not happen. Team spirit happens when you sacrifice. You sacrifice time, name, money. You give respect, you give time, you give everything. Giving is team spirit. If I start taking from you, you'll start snatching back. I'm taking this area, I'm taking this power, give power. Enjoy, look at them, watch them. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, there's another question. Is um, You said that you don't have targets in your organization. I have worked all my life in pharma. And I am a little surprised and curious all the more to know how does an organization, a pharma organization, work with our targets and uh, what happens at the appraisal time if there are no targets or there's nothing to assess against something which was planned? See, the point basically is what if I attach your income with your incentives? And if I attach, if my... Income is attached with my sale. Mm -hmm. Would you sell, would you get from zero to 100, 10 rupees, from zero to 1,000, 100 rupees, from zero to 1 lakh, 10,000 rupees, zero to 20 lakh, 2 lakh rupees. So point basically is what? The targets and conditions, right? Point is not target, point is intentions. I said you, Niyat. So when I talk about the Niyat, so I talk about my Niyat first. And then I propagate the same thing. If, uh, see, another reason is what? 
when you are involved and engaged with your people with your team you are emotionally attached you see them toiling hard doing everything possible then you want to help them you know after a year of two years or six months you will become successful trust them if you sit with a balance sheet in your hand right look at only profits not have and i like it very much when you said it reflects on my needs yeah very 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 yeah. very fact very profound uh there's another question is there anything like healthy competition within a uh, so within a uh, is incomplete in the chart box i assume this person is asking within the organization charles yeah. is there anything like healthy competition there there's always a healthy competition see the point basically is what if uh, there is either politics either uh, uh, i should really cut you down or uh, i can perform better than you so there's always some kind of a competition in negative the politics i should suppress you i should not show you i should not give you credit on the second side basically is what uh we always say on uh, the leadership is not to please the top leaders leadership is to please make the life comfortable of the juniors so we propagate these values so this is always a healthy competition which team is more vibrant which team is more positive i give you example for example two people join same organization same time two different headquarters one headquarter is okay all right normal one headquarter is having lots of trouble of the past after one year normal headquarter bring a sale of 10 lakh rupees the troubled headquarter bring a sale of 6 lakh rupees which is better if you look at sale and result you'll see 10 lakh rupees if you see the situation as a whole holistic you'll see 6 lakh rupees so you have different ways your perspective has to be different if you see holistic you'll say no he has struggled more i'm supposed to support him more and for that you are supposed to have that kind of a belief otherwise it does not happen and i tell you honestly uh it needs courage of a promoter actually no i give damn to sale i want culture i want atmosphere i want uh people should admire the company with this if you ask me what gives me happiness uh, it will never be tangible rupees why sales i can say yes you want to become number one no then i know i'll say number one in terms of admiration not from outside first from inside outside is all right that's the outcome that's glamour inside is reality i want reality because and and by looking at the buzz atmosphere in the organization you come to know which direction organization is heading positive negative struggling politics bad what so you said hard working and i can see a lot of heart coming out here today yeah. it's always <laughs> there yes that's, that's why don't come with excuses yes so there's a push yes yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah go ahead go ahead please that's all right go ahead yeah so there's a question as how can a manager deal with the feeling of insecurity when his high performing subordinate is becoming proud and disrespectful so it's seeing the situation from one way why a see this basically happens when uh there's a culture of sale there's a culture of result there's no culture of upgradation example i give you i am a senior manager my qualities are less i work with a junior whose qualities are more after a few months he realizes that he is just for the sake of designation right uh he does not give any value addition his advices are not really right he has become manager due to somebody's pull he was close to somebody because politics is always there right uh then this can happen so it's not 
looking at from one angle, look from both angles and then think what is right, what is wrong. And sometimes uh, designation comes on the head. Sometimes you have uh, maybe hit him or uh, uh, he, he became sensitive to some comment you made or some uh, behavior you gave to him when he was new. There can be many, many mysteries in that. Many, many things can be there. But ultimately, I've seen if leader is able, capable, people follow. It's a weakness of a leader, nothing else. And, and if the organizational culture is like that, obviously the people fall in the same culture. Then. Absolutely, 100%. There's another question. Padma Kumar is very keen on asking, and he wants to know a little bit. You, you, tell, you tell who is the guy. I mean, I. They know me. I mean, I should know forward what is Padma Kumar. You just tell me what is Padma Kumar. Then I'll answer. Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> okay, I can just see the name there. That's uh, all right. He, he wants to know more about your 30 day rigorous training program. So if you could just send to a rigorous little training program, uh, see, point basically is what just one thing we check in people in rigorous. Whatever is your capability, are you giving your 110% or not? Or you are coming in a training program to enjoy. So we don't like that. If, you're in, if you have come in a training program to enjoy here, how can we trust you that you'll perform nice over there and nobody will watch you? That way we are very, very sensitive. Uh, Capabilities is not important. All right, you have, average is fine, but you're trying, are you giving extra or not? Are you keen for gaining the way we are giving? If company is giving 100, at least you should absorb that and try to come up with that. The 30 day program is more like a prenuptial kind of a period, you know, wherein you decide whether the marriage will happen or not. If it, in, the, in first 10 days, we decide generally. <laughs> All right. Great. So I don't see any more questions coming up. And there are a lot of comments and compliments, though. It has been wonderful listening to you, Mr. Raju Juneja. I mean, it's an opportunity. It's a lifetime opportunity for me personally. I'm very, very happy to have you on board. Thank you so much for doing Thank you very time. much. Thanks a lot. Kind of you. And for people who are there, I am posting the link for the CCUs in the chat box. Kindly fill the form and submit it. So you will get the CCUs there. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And have a good day. Thank you.